I thought that I'd do something a little special for all the wrestling fans. Apparently it is indeed going to be the missing link. Call your mom. You better call your mammy. You talk to my face, don't talk behind my face. Oh, shut up. Rocky King has been holding his own quite well with uh, Scott McGee. You see right here the easy way to uh, break out of this hole is put a leg on the rope, which calls for a uh, just a, a break there. Have to get up and back, start back over there, circling each other, having a lot of respect for one another. Very good break on the or block on the part of Rocky King, but all to no avail. Back leg trip by uh, Scott McGee takes King back to the canvas. That bet, of course, Sweet Brown Sugar is with us. Uh, Sugar, this man King looks like he's got a lot of promise. Garden, I would like to take the time out now to say a special hello to all the friends in Florida and all my friends in Nassau. You're right, Rocket King has definite potential. You know, Gordon, I've been in Florida a long time. I've seen a lot of wrestlers come and go, especially young ones. Rocket King has the disadvantage in, in terms of experience, and Scott McGee, a very fine wrestler coming from a wrestling family. But in time, I do see some promise in Rocket. Maybe as the match goes along, I can see even more promise, and the people will too. Side headlock now by Scott McGee as he has King uh, down to the canvas and referee Del Alfonso checking those shoulders regularly. King managing to keep that uh, right shoulder off. As long as he does, he uh, stays in a predicament, but he is uh, uh, he could be in pin here. No, sir, got the shoulder off once again. Well, you notice how Scott McGee right there has his full body weight on the upper torso of Rocky King. Uh, all that weight just forces Rocky King to have to breathe harder, use up that valuable energy. See right here, there's a ride with uh, Scott McGee on top of him, once again, keeping that weight there. Trying for a quarter Nelson here, trying to roll him over, turn him over, because he's got to get him on his back for a pinfall. Rocky King just fighting, the, well, there's the shoulders down momentarily, but not quite enough for a pin. Coming back up in a front face lock, Rocky King forcing him back into the ropes, which calls for a break. And it is a, indeed a, uh, a good clean break. Rocky King backing away. King has ex excellent muscular definition and confirmation. And I would think uh, Scott McGee caught him with a good shoulder press smash coming off the rope. Uh, hip toss by King. And that's the one thing that Scott McGee's going to have to watch for is overconfidence. That's what Rocket King needs to, to really look for is to be a speed demon. And that's the only way to overcome a guy like Scott, but you can see he just got him, Gordon. Hooked him and pinned him uh, very, very nicely. And so uh, the victory in this first match goes to uh, Scott McGee and a good display of sportsmanship there by both Scott McGee and Rocky King. Well, buddy, a lot of action upcoming, including tonight. That's right. Tonight in Sarasota and Rick Flair, the world's heavyweight champion, will be there defending his title. Now, tomorrow, there is a Super Bowl spectacular in Orlando starting at 2 o'clock. That's right, at 2 o'clock in Orlando at the Eddie Graham Sports Palace. That way, you can go to their wrestling matches, see your favorite wrestlers in action, and still be back home in time for the Super Bowl. Also, this coming week, there's matches uh, in Ocala, also Fort Pierce. And one other thing, Gordon, I'd like to remind some of the wrestling fans that had a hard time getting your book that is now on sale at all bookstores throughout Florida, and uh, it's quite an interesting book. Well, thank you very much, buddy. Yeah, anybody who does want a copy of that, it's available to bookstores. Uh, they don't have it. It can be ordered through Dodd Mead, and, of course, we'll have it at some of the selected arenas around the state, too. Sweet Brown Sugar has joined us, and uh, Sugar, uh, as we said a moment ago, I think this young fellow, Rocky King, shows a great promise. I think he shows a, a hell of a lot of promise, Gordon. I think he's courageous. Of course, Scott, he was giving up a lot of uh, disadvantages in, in the terms of experience, and experience is the number one thing in professional wrestling, but I guarantee you one day, somewhere down the road, if you're not careful, you could see a shade of Sweet Brown Sugar come out in a guy like Rocket King. All right, fair warning by uh, Sweet Brown Sugar. I'd say also we're going to be seeing the NWA World Heavyweight Champion Ric Flair in action today in a match a little bit later on in the program. Also, of course, uh, we will be talking to the boss man. We'll also have a special take five with uh, the fabulous Freebirds and a special interview with Jerry Gordy. The boss man did arrive uh, at Tampa International Airport not too terribly long ago, and 
And we have a uh, videotape of his arrival at the airport, not quite in the style, apparently, that the boss man is accustomed to. Uh, let's go now, then, uh, by videotape to uh, Tampa International Airport and the arrival of the boss man. from the boss man a little bit later on. He is here and will be arriving uh, uh, here at the program at uh, some later time, so uh, be watching for that. And we'll be back with more action right after we pause for these words. Championship Wrestling returns to Fort Lauderdale in the Sunrise Musical Theater this coming Wednesday night, January 23rd. Now, Wednesday night, January 30th, Championship Wrestling does return to Miami Beach in the Miami Beach Convention Center. That's Wednesday night, the 30th. A great, great night of wrestling competition. A steel cage match, hacksaw Butch Reed returns, and a host of other favorites. So make your plans to attend the convention center on the 30th. Now then, this coming Wednesday night in Fort Lauderdale at the Sunrise Musical Theater in a six-man Texas Tornado match with all six men in the ring at the same time, it'll be Dirty Dutch Mantell and the Freebirds, Michael Hayes and Buddy Roberts against Crusher Cruz, Jeff, Big Jim, Neidhart, and the Saint. In an I Quit match, it will be Mr. B, Brian Blair, against Jesse Barr. Sweet Brown Sugar and Pistol Pez Watley take on the Pretty Young Things. There will be three other matches, including Scott McGee going up against Ravishing Rick Rude. Pistol Pez Watley and Sweet Brown Sugar are with me. Gentlemen, the boss man will be there that night. And we looking forward to it. But you know what the main thing is? We got to wrestle none other than the PYT. They call themselves the Pretty One Young Things. Well, I'm going to tell you. When you get into that squared circle, baby, it ain't pretty how pretty you are. It ain't what else you are. It ain't even the boss man. It's whether you can get down nasty. And I'm going to tell you what, you looking at the nastiest one to be on the get down. And when you get in there, you're going to find out the sweet man, me and Sugar, takes care of business every day. I know that's right. I just got a little brief message from Mr. Pringle. Pringle. Can you imagine having a last name like Pringle? Well, let me tell you something, you little kinky, 
dingy little something other you. You look like a pencil pusher that's never had to do anything in your life but eat off your mama's table. But when you come to Sunshine's mu Musical Theater in Fort Lauderdale, you gonna eat off my table. And I ain't feeding nothing but you know what in bubble gum and I'm fresh out of gum. Dutch Mantel with Shoe Baby getting set to go against the Red Raider. One fall with a 10-minute time limit. And wherever Mantel goes, Shoe Baby goes with him, that 10-foot uh, bull whip. Brother, it is, uh, he is most effective with it when he uses it. All right, square up, collar and elbow. Dutch Mantel getting a side headlock, going to a hip lock takedown. Keeps the side headlock on the Red Raider. Mantel got you some a good shoulder smash coming off. Mantel moves inside the lock. And an arm drag uh, hip lock takedown. Off the ropes once again. Mantel with another shoulder smash. Mantel has been steadily out front since the very outset of this match, buddy. Well, you know, one thing that really makes Dutch Mantel such a dangerous adversary in the ring is that he has such an uncanny knowledge of wrestling. You can look at his wrestling ability, always right there with every move. But then if his opponent wants to start using the uh, cheap underhanded trick, I don't think there's a street fighter around that is any better with the brawling tactics than Dutch Mantel. This man is just double tough, double mean. He will go any style you want. Right here, you see him really hanging on to that side headlock, just wearing down the Red Raider. That could have been a mistake on the part of the Red Raider. The Raider to go to Fifth City, uh, Dutch is right there with him. No question about that, Mantel. Uh... Over, goes into a vertical suple, has uh, the Red Raider back to the canvas once again, Mantel. Off the ropes, down across uh, the chest. Mantel gets the three count. Dutch Mantel gets the three count on the Red Raider in short order. Goes over to the corner now to collect his hat and uh, shoe baby. Uh, I want to, if I can, for just a moment, talk to the former Florida heavyweight champion, Jesse Barr. And he has joined us here at the desk, Mr. Barr. Uh... Yeah, you know, Gordon, I have a few things to say. Since Jesse Barr came to the state of Florida, I've taken over everything, you know. I became the Florida heavyweight champion, and now the whole Florida, Florida State uh, wrestlers, promoters, and everything are trying to keep my belt from me, you know. Everybody's been coming down here in teams or in dynasties, and everybody's got somebody else. You know, Jesse Barr's got friends, too, you know. You know, I got Rick Flair, that's one of my greatest friends, but he can't be here all the time because he has to defend his world title all over the world. But let me tell you about a man here that has asked me to, to help him come in here because there's somebody that he wants. And I'll show you this man. Do you know this man here? Wild Bill Irwin. I do indeed. Uh, very, you might want to show the people. Uh... Show. So should of myself. Take a good look at this man right here. You see this? He said he wants to settle an old score with Dutch Mantel. Dutch Mantel calls himself the master of the bullwhip. Well, this guy here is the king. <laughs> Let me tell you that. And when he comes out here with his bullwhip, when he comes out here with his bullwhip, the first thing he's going to do is he's going to kick that Dutch Mantel's butt all over the state of Florida. Well, just a second. Uh... Hey, I heard you, buddy. You mentioned my name. You talking about me? I think if you're talking about me, Barr. You talk to my face, don't talk behind my face. See this right here? I see I'm about huh? giving you fair warning. Uh, get out of my face, Barr. Uh oh, gentlemen, not here at the desk, please. You're not talking to me, buddy. I'm just giving you fair warning. Well, you give me fair warning. I don't need none of your whip. Your day's number. Yeah, okay, my day's numbered. Okay. I got fair warning, Barr. That's all I need, buddy. And I'll handle you later, Barr. Who's this guy looking for me? Wild, Wild Bill, Bill Irwin, Irwin. Yep. that's fine with me, baby. Because I like people to look for me because I am not hard to find, Jack. Well, that is a natural fact. He is not hard to find. And uh, when and if Mr. Irwin decides to come here, Dutch Mantel will be waiting for him, that's for sure. We'll be right back.
waiting for the arrival of two of the Freebirds, Michael Hayes and his brother, Buddy Roberts. And then coming very soon, we're going to have their partner, the other Freebird, Bam Bam Gordy Perry will be here. Well, here it is, comes the ostentatious uh, Michael Hayes and his partner, Buddy Roberts. Very good to have you here. We were just mentioning that uh, your other brother. That's Gordy right. You know, we're real excited about it, Buddy. There's a whole lot of things going on, and a whole lot of things are going to come to an end. And basically what we're talking about is them Russians. I, you know, they've been busting on my head a little bit. That's okay. It ain't the first time it happened, and I'm sure it won't be the last. But there is one thing I'm pretty sure is going to be the last. I believe they've just about had their last time around here. Because you know what's coming up, buddy. There's a cage match coming up. And in that cage match, it ain't bragging. It's a fact. We're the baddest when it comes down. And it's going to come down on you. And once one of them loses, they're going to be out of here. And it doesn't matter to me where it happens, maybe. We'll have to agree with you there. Cage match is a very dangerous, as always. Someone has to get hurt in a cage match. There's no running, no hiding. Uh... Well, let me tell you what. The reason I came here is to get rushes and send them out of the state of Florida. And we got Bam Bam coming. Hey, hey, hey. It's going to be Bam Bam, and I'll tell you what, we're going to be fitting with these Russians once they get in the cage. Hey, that's our type of match. Hey, we're bad street, right? If anybody don't know who Terry Gordy is, he's 285 pounds of walking, talking, romping, stomping, graveyard destruction. And he's going to be standing right with us, 720 pounds of the fabulous Freebirds, and talking about tomorrow afternoon, buddy. 2 p.m. Super Bowl spectacular right there in Orlando. The Freebirds are going everywhere. We're going to be in Oak we're going to be in Melbourne, and we're going to be whooping some heads anywhere we go. You can bet on that. Well, I understand you'll also be in Miami on the 30th. That's right. We're going to be in Miami on the 30th, and we got a special friend going to be there. J.J. French from Twisted Sister, the big rock group with the hit. We're not going to take it, and I want to rock, and I do rock and roll all day long. But J.J. French is going to be there in Miami on the 30th. Uh, I also understand that Hacksaw Butch Reed is going to be down there so you know it's going to be a big thing man very well i'd like to thank you both very much we also have a very special yeah bam bam had album. something he wanted to say to the people and i'm sure everybody wants to hear what he's got to say but people rest assured this we're going to say goodbye to them russians well, let's go to this special vcr film with bam bam Gordy. I can't wait to get to FLA. Everybody's been asking where Bam Bam's at. Well, Bam Bam's on his way. And I'm on my way to take care of a little business. And it don't matter where it's at. It don't matter if it's in Jacksonville, Florida. I'm sure there's going to be pandemonium there. It don't matter if it's in Miami, Florida. I'm sure when I get there, I'm sure my brothers are already causing a lot of pandemonium. But there's going to be a lot more when I get there. It don't matter. Hey, it don't matter if it's out in the Oki Pinocchi swamp. I don't mind taking somebody out there in a boat and tying a rock to them and throwing them overboard. If that's what they want to do, if that's the way they want to take care of business there, then we can take care of business. Just it don't matter where it's at. Mark around Jacksonville, Miami, Tampa, anywhere in Florida. The Freebirds are going to be taking care of some business and Bad Street's going to be there. And I'm sure everybody knows the story about Bad Street. Man, we was born on Bad Street. We was brought up fighting right there on Bad Street. And we lived, we was the baddest people on the street because, man, we lived in the last house on the right. Just like it says the song, I'd like to say hello to my brother, Buddy and Mike. I'm looking forward to being there. All right, this match, one fall, 10-minute time limit now. It'll be Mark and Jay Youngblood, the U.S. Tag Team Champions, going out against Paul Garner and Randy Barber. That's Garner uh, going to the outside now, and it'll be Randy Barber moving out first against uh, Mark Youngblood. One fall, 10-minute time limit. Florida heavyweight champion, Mr. B, Brian Blair, has joined us, and uh, I know, of course, that you're particularly impressed with uh, the Youngbloods. I sure am, Lord. You know, they took those belts right from the Russians, just like they said they were going to do, and, you know, when Mark and Jay get out there, they're always a lot of action. They're out with their, you know, their brothers, and like they say, blood sinker than water. 
what, tremendous chop. I heard that chop all the way here, Gord. You know, a lot of people use forearms, a lot of people use fists, and you got to use what you're best at. And I'll tell you what, these two guys have got chops. And I was looking at Mike Golden the other day, and he's got bruises all over his chest, all over his uh, just welts like I've never seen before from uh, Mark and Jay Youngblood's chops. Tremendous shoulder smash. These guys are perpetual motion. Excellent suplex. Jay Youngblood now with a side headlock gets over, makes the tag with uh, Mark Youngblood, and so uh, Mark moves into the ring, and as Barber tried to set up Jay Youngblood, he found himself caught by uh, Mark Youngblood. Mark coming off the ropes, down across the face of uh, Randy Barber. And uh, Garner started to move into the ring out of camera range, but it was blocked by referee Bill Alfonso. Alfonso back in checking those shoulders. And as Brian said a moment ago, uh, buddy, uh, the young bloods are indeed perpetual motion. Well, they are certainly wrestling champions. Since becoming the United States Tag Team Champions for the National Wrestling Alliance, these men have been fighting champions. They've been taking on all top contenders. Well, look at this move here. Going up for a flying head scissor with a he giant headlock or one man, both men down. This speaks for itself. The caliber of wrestlers you're seeing with these United States Heavyweight Tag Team Champions here. Just like he said, perpetual motion, always on the move, never giving his opponent a chance to get the upper hand. Going into the floor dance now, and uh, this man is an exciting wrestler to watch. No question about that. Garner off the ropes. Garner oh, caught with the lariat. And again, the tag is made. Uh, Mark Youngblood moving in down across the body of uh, Paul Garner. Jay Youngblood cuts him off at the pass. And so, a well-deserved, uh, well-fought victory by Mark and Jay Youngblood. Brian Blair, of course, Mr. B, is working very closely with the Tampa Police Athletic League, the PAL, PAL, uh, in uh, coaching their wrestling team. And I understand now from uh, Corporal Larry Siegel of the Tampa Police Department that PALs around the state are beginning to form wrestling teams, and apparently there's going to be a statewide tournament upcoming in the near future. And I certainly want to thank Brian personally for his... Gentlemen, right here. Well, the boss a... man has finally arrived. I want to be a gentleman. Pushy pretty. Buddy Cole. The boss man the is here. The master of the ring, huh? The master of the ring? Well, I want all my dynasty to get together. This is the Pringle dynasty. Mr. Rick Rude, the missing link, the pretty young thing. This is the Pringle dynasty. This is the man that I've served all over the world to get together. The best group of wrestlers in the world today are right here. The Pringle family has brought them in. Now, everything didn't go right. My right was the other word didn't go right. There's a few other things that are going right. But starting now, everything's going right, Mr. Gordon Soley. Everything's going right. If you are a champion, if you have a belt, you better watch out. Your days are numbered because your belts are going to be taken away. These are the new champions. These are the wrestlers of 1985. These are the champions of Florida. The missing link. for sure and that missing link is something else but uh well uh i'll tell you what uh, we'll be back and uh we'll see what happens later on championship wrestling will be returning to miami beach in the miami beach convention center 
on Wednesday night, January 30th. Wednesday night, January 30th, a night of champions. A steel cage match. Hacksaw Butch Reed returns and a host of others. We'll tell you more about that next week. This coming Wednesday night, championship wrestling will be held in Fort Lauderdale at the Sunrise Musical Theater. Match time is 8 p.m. Advanced tickets available, of course, at all Bass ticket locations. There will be a six-man Texas Tornado match with all six men in the ring at the same time. Dirty Dutch Mantel and the free, fabulous Freebirds, uh, Michael Hayes and Buddy Roberts, against Crusher Khrushchev, Big Jim Neidhart, and the Saint. In an I Quit match, it'll be Mr. B, Brian Blair, against Jesse Barr. Sweet Brown Sugar and Pistol Pez Watley take on the Pretty Young Things. It'll be Scott McGee against Rick Rude. In a handicap match, it'll be the Missing Link against Mike Golden. Rocky King takes on King Cobra. All of this action takes place on Wednesday night in uh, Fort Lauderdale at the Sunrise Musical Theater. Let's hear these comments now from Mr. Jesse Barr regarding an I Quit match. Brian Blair, you come out here week after week at a lion. You never beat me. You stole my belt that you're wearing around the waist. But now I finally got my match, an I Quit match. That means I can do anything I want, but I'm going to make you scream. I want everybody in the state of Florida to hear you say, I scream, Mr. Barr. I scream. I give up. And that's just what will happen. Well, Mr. Blair has heard the comments. Well, I sure did, Gordon. And you know, first off, I'd like to say I'm proud to represent the state of Florida with this belt. Because this belt represents the people, Jesse Barr. This isn't your belt. This is the people of Florida's belt. But I'm going to put the belt aside right now, Jesse Barr. And we're talking about your match, and I quit match. You're going to make me say I quit. And I want you people to remember that because, I'm, first off, I want to thank you for supporting me last time I was in Fort Lauderdale at the Sunrise Music Theater. But, Jesse Barr, you know, there's no pinfalls. You can try to pin me if you want. You can do whatever you want. And they're going to stick that microphone up in my face, and they're going to stick that microphone up in your face, and somebody's got to say I quit. And you're supposed to be a specialist at this match. But we're going to find out, Jesse Barr, because I promise you one thing. I'm not going to quit. Thank you so very much. Mr. B, Brian Blair, you'll see him this coming Wednesday night, January 23rd, in Fort Lauderdale at the Sunrise Musical Theater. Let's hear what the Cuban Connection has to say. Michael Hayes, Dutch Mantel, Buddy Roberts. Everybody knows that next week we're in the Miami Convention Center. But you want to know what's funny? This week we're at the Sunrise in a Texas Tornado match. And these people think that they're going to do a number on us. They're from Bad Street. Well, Michael Hayes, you know what Bad Street's like in Moscow, Russia? It makes your Bad Street look like a playground. So when me and my comrades get together, we're going to make it so you never even make it to the Miami Beach Convention Center. And that means all of you. And for a lot of deal, uno de ellos, no va a estar en Miami. Y tú vas a ver que los otros sí somos número uno. Russia y los cubanos son número uno. Y recuerda de eso, Freebirds. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I've got the fabulous Freebirds with me right now. I'm referring to Michael Hayes and Buddy Roberts. And gentlemen, you've heard all the comments. Well, you know something, Gordon? I'm not going to sit out here and rehash what happened last week at Sunrise. Everybody knows, especially me. And especially this head of mine. But like I said before, I don't really worry about getting my head busted open. Because when we used to go for chicken at the table, you get your head busted open just to get the last piece. This ain't going to be my last piece of you. Because that's right, they're talking about making it to Miami. Well, you're going to have to get through Sunrise and all six in the ring, buddy. And Dutch Mantel by my side. We're talking about Texas Tornado. We were born in a tornado. Hey, you know what? What a tornado can do? That's exactly what's going to happen in Miami. And I'll tell you, the sun's going to set. Ha, 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 ha. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right, I want to get a brief comment, if we can, from Dutch Mantel. I just want to tell Michael Hayes and Buddy Roberts, I'm going to be right beside you, boys. We've got a score to settle, and there's only one way to settle anything. Let's get in there and do it, and we're going to do it right there in Sunrise. Okay, we're waiting now for the arrival of uh, the NWA World Heavyweight Champion, Ric Flair. Uh, Flair will be competing. One fall, ten-minute time. I'm at a rare opportunity to see this man in action in a uh, non-title event, and it is uh, Ric Flair. I've always been considered 
the most fashionable athlete in the world today. So because I'm the world champion, and because I'm standing here with one of the greatest wrestlers alive today, Mr. Jesse Barr, I thought that I'd do something a little special for all the wrestling fans in the state of Florida, and that's wrestle on your program today. I feel sorry for this young gentleman because today I really feel like making an example of somebody. Gordon, you're looking as classy as ever, brother. Well, thank you so very much. Rick Flair, the NWA World Heavyweight Champion, going uh, towards the ring at this time. This match is, of course, one fall with a 10-minute time limit, and Flair resplendent with the uh, very, very costly robes that he uh, wears to the ring. of Jesse Barr, of course, the former Florida heavyweight champion and a close uh, personal friend of Mr. Flair's. Flair uh, removing that robe, and of course you can uh, you'll be able to get a... Uh... You know, Gordon, they used to call me the and now they're redefining the word because just how great and what else we see, Uh, NWA World Heavyweight Championship belt. There's the trophy that every man in professional wrestling dreams of having, but only few of us will be able to acquire. Excuse me, yes, that's a rather all inclusive uh, phrase, uh, Mr. Barr. Hip lock takedown, a quick head scissors by uh, Jack Hart, but Barr. Uh, Flair breaks it, and Hart again goes for the head scissors. Flair away from it Look once again. Speed. Look at the speed of the world champion here. Look at the, speed, the fantastic speed of Rick Flair. Good drop toe by uh, Rick Flair, and he keeps the ride going as Hart tries to sit up and that escape. Ride all day long. It's very easy to see why Rick Flair is the world's heavyweight champion. He's always in control. Right here, Jack Hart is able to pull a reverse over and come up with a hammer lock. But I would say, when knowing Rick Flair, this won't be for long. Uh, Rick Flair, of course, being the uh, world's heavyweight champion, the NWA champion, recognized throughout the world, the largest and oldest governing body of uh, Did you see that? He, he accused Rick Flair of pulling his hair. Now, that everybody knows that he didn't pull his hair. Champion, uh, That's quite an accusation to, to say that the world champion would pull your hair. Well, Mr. Barr, uh, there have been uh, allegations made at knee driven to the uh, midsection of Hart and out of the throat. Puts Hart back to the canvas and Flair very much in control of the situation at this point in time. Look at every move. Every move that he does is counted out for. He makes no unnecessary moves. Every move he makes means something to the match. Series of forearms and players somewhat upset with the referee. Uh, hip toss by the world champion Rick Flair. And Hart fires Look to the middle. That. Look at that other guy throw a fist. Flair now with a front chancery on uh, Jack Hart, has him back to the canvas. Now underhooks the arm and uh, hooks the far leg. Reverse Nelson, let's see if he's going to uh, he's going try and exact the pinfall. Cradle. Hart able to slip away from it. Not completely away. Just putting that pressure on this front chancery. Yeah. It takes a lot out of the body. It's really twisting that neck. Putting yeah. a big crimp in that breathing. Back to the side, headlock. Hard fires him off. Flair looking at shoulder smash coming off the ropes. Flair trying to get a high hit toss by Jack Hart. Hart goes in for a beautiful drop kick. And Flair hits the canvas and Flair. charged in just a bit recklessly perhaps oh did you see uh such mantel get all hot and worried when i talked about somebody that is much better than him coming in here as my friend with a bullwhip huh <laughs> he looked awful nervous to me but he's gonna have to pay for put, putting his hands on my face like he did 
back hard. Back to the canvas once again. And Flair very definitely in control of the situation here. Yeah, now. punish him a little more. Rick. Punish him a little more. hard with a forearm to the side of the job, but Flair retaliates, Hart retaliates, and Flair now firing uh, to the midsection of chop into the throat, another chop and another, and Hart has got to be rocking and reeling here. All done completely legal. High vertical display by the NWA World Heavyweight Champion. He says, now we go to school. Now he's going to teach him exactly what wrestling is all about. And it's Flair to the spinning toe hold, from the spinning toe hold into the uh, Eddie Graham figure four leg lock. He better give that up pretty quick before his leg is completely broken. That's it. Punish him, Rick. That was a submission hold. The figure four leg lock uh, submitted by... Uh, uh, Rick Have you Flair. ever seen a tremendous act, athlete like Ric Flair work so good in a match? And he gave, that guy did absolutely not one counter against him. He had well, complete control, say... control of that match. That's and what? To teach him his little lesson. Woo! Guys like myself and the great Jesse Barr always rise above all the rest. Because above anything else in the world today, we are men. Men know how to compete on a championship level. Woo, we don't do bad. We the ladies do the right thing, Jeff. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, Daddy. All uh, right, I think that's enough. And we'll be back in just a moment. Championship Wrestling will return to Miami Beach in the Miami Beach Convention Center on Wednesday night, January 30th. That's Wednesday night, January 30th, a night of champions. Hacksaw Butch Reed returns. There'll be a steel cage match and a host of other great events. Now then, let's talk about wrestling this coming Wednesday night, January 23rd in Fort Lauderdale at the Sunrise Musical Theater. Match time is 8 p.m. In a six-man Texas Tornado match with all six men in the ring at the same time, Dirty Dutch Mantel and the fabulous Freebirds, Michael Hayes and Buddy Roberts, take on Crusher Khrushchev, Big Jim Neidhart, and the Saint. In an I Quit match, it'll be Mr. B, Brian Blair, against Jesse Barr. Sweet Brown Sugar and Pistol Pez Watley take on the Pretty Young Things. Uh, Scott McGee goes up against Rick Rude. Uh, in a handicap match, it'll be the Missing Link against the Mike Golan and one other opponent to be named at ringside. And Rocky King takes on King Cobra. All of this action takes place Wednesday night, January 23rd, in Fort Lauderdale Sunrise Musical Theater. Time now for our missing children's bulletin. Uh, this week, uh, we have two 17-year-olds that we're concerned about. This is Rita Yoconda Romero. She is 17 years old, 5 foot 6. She was last seen September 13th in Orlando, Florida. She may be in the vicinity of Waukegan, Illinois, or Chicago, Illinois. Anyone having any information, please call in Florida, 1-800-342-0821. Outside of Florida, 1-904-488-5221. Our second missing... Uh, a uh, person is Michael Francis Rosenberg. He is also 17. He is 6 feet tall, weighs 145 pounds. He was last seen September 13, 1984, in Merritt Island, Florida. Uh, he may be driving a 1972 a Brown Chevrolet. Anyone having any information, please contact 1-800-342-0821. Now let's go to the ring. Pistol Pez Watley, the Southern Heavyweight Champion. Getting set to move out against Mike Golden. One fall with a 10-minute time limit. Waiting now for the bell. There's the bell. I mentioned that Billy DeMoya, the Rockefellers uh, out of Fort Lauderdale, uh, sent us an interesting card saying that they were hoping that 85 would be the year for Brian Blair, and it is indeed so far because Brian Blair, of course, doesn't have the Florida Heavyweight Championship. Good move. By uh, Pistol Pest Watley, the Southern Heavyweight Champion, a full body slam back into a side headlock. Watley, hip lock takedown on uh, Mike Golden. One fall, 10 minute time limit. Well, the Pistol Pest Watley is grinding in with his side headlock. Uh, I'm sure that he is not underestimating the ability of Mike Golden. Mike Golden's been around for some time. You can look at the uh, physical development of this man, he's quite impressive. Right now, it's going to be up to Mike Golden to come out. And, well, he looks like he forced him into the rope. 
Down goes Mike Golden. Pistol pass Wadley Lucky going back to that side headlock. Side like a headlock takedown. And once again, laying there with the upper weight of his body across the chest of Mike Golden. Mike Golden rolling him over, trying for a pen, but not yet, not yet. Uh, right now, Pistol Pass Watley is still in 100%. Certainly no question about that. Watley, uh, as we've said before, out of the University of Tennessee, Chattanooga. And, uh, well, I see that uh, Mr. Rick Rude and uh, the boss man have arrived on the scene. I've been listening to what you people had to talk about, and it sounds like it's real boring stuff. Gordon, we've run into each other before, haven't we? Why don't you tell these people about something they might want to hear about? Why don't you tell them about the world professional arm wrestling champion? Why don't you tell them about some of my accomplishments? And why don't, Gordon, I'm going to give these people a treat right now. I'm going to let them take a look at a real athlete. I'm going to let them see what's going on on the west side. Oh, indeed, Mr. Uh... Rick Rude. And, boss man. Well, the boss man is here at... Why is this pistol man out there wrestling him when he, uh, he should be he's a champion and a true champion? How come he hasn't wrestling one of my men? That's what I want to know. Well, first of all, sir, uh, these matches have to be signed. Uh, contracts have to be signed ahead of time. We can't wait till the last minute to... Uh, uh, I've talked to the promoter, and I think we're going to get Missing Link on TV today. He said he's going to be wrestling two men. I want to show these people just how tough this man is. Are you serious? Yeah, I want him to wrestle two men. He don't need to be wrestling one man. One man, he don't even need to go to the ring to wrestle one man. Two men at least. And as far as I'm concerned, I've talked to the promoter, and everywhere he goes in the state of Florida, if it can be worked out, he's going to wrestle two men. Wait a second, we've got something going on here. This is Wadley moving outside the ring. And, uh... Well, I'll tell you what. retaliating now on Mike Golden and it is uh, Golden catching an elbow across the top of the skull. Gut wrench oh, he, he does know how to do one hole, don't he? He does know one hole. All I've seen him do is punch. Words from uh, Mr. Percy Pringle and uh, meanwhile... Uh, you know, the people are going to be surprised. The people of Florida are in for a big surprise because the time has come. The time has come for the dynasty to arrive. My mother's at the top. We're here with all the rest, the best professional wrestlers in the world today. As you can see, my man Rick Rude walking around the ring. <laughs> He's not, he can't even tie the shoelaces on you, my man. Look at that. Look. Beautiful area. He got, by, uh, well. He got the pinfall. He got the pinfall. So, pistol Why don't you wrestle somebody? Why don't you wrestle a wrestler? Why don't you get the ring with one of my men? Not with no jabroni. Why don't you wrestle one of my men? I'm going to tell you what, boss man. It seems like you've been out here doing a whole lot of talking and not enough walking. And I'm going to tell you what. If you figure that you or any other men that you got under contract can whoop me, I will be out there in the middle of that ring waiting. I don't make up the schedule. The distinguished NWA does, and I meet any opponent that they got, including you. And I'll tell you what, baby. I got a wrestler. I got a wrestler. I'm going to tell you what. If you do anything in the world, I want you to do this. Call your mama. You better call your mammy, and you better tell your mammy to get her in your insurance paid up, uh, because right. you're going to need some yeah, insurance. Yeah, we'll be back. This is we'll the be major back. champion. We'll be back. Mama. We'll be back in just a minute. The man of the hour. Waiting now uh, for the arrival of the uh, Hollywood Blondes, 
And uh, they'll be going up against uh, Tony Diamato and uh, Mr. Warner. Paul Warner and uh, Tony Diamato. And uh, wait a second, wait a second. Because I just paid them off. I just gave them a pretty penny, and they're going to the airport. I told y'all I was going to have one of my men here today, and I want you to watch. Take note, because the time has come. The Pringles and the Dynasty are in Florida. Well, apparently it is indeed going to be the missing link. And so the uh, missing link moving into the ring. And apparently uh, taking on two men then because nobody's with uh, Ringo except the missing link. Well, let me tell you something, Gordon. I've been around professional wrestling over 20 years. I've traveled around the world. I have never seen a more awesome-looking individual than the missing link. This man looks like he has muscle piled on top of muscle. There's not an ounce of body fat on him. Warner and Diamato charged in, and the missing link uh, dispatched them in uh, quick order. And uh, Diamato now being smashed into that uh, fire turnbuckle. And uh, we searched all over the world. My computer bank are full of information of wrestlers all over the world. And this man right here has came out on top. In every survey we've made, this man is on top. You're going to see things from this man, Gord, that you've never seen from any professional wrestler that's ever entered this ring. So I want you to watch, take note, because we're going all over Florida starting today. Well, fair warning from uh, the boss man, Percy Pringle, and his Diamato uh, hurdle outside the ring. And... Uh, in the ring with a chair now. Well, he's using it on himself, not even his opponent. Smashed the chair and then uh, headbutted uh, Mr. Warner, drove him to the canvas. And, uh, well, I'll tell you, he's a, he's a weird, uh, strange, but as you but he said, an awesome individual. Well, I'll tell you something. I'm, I'm impressed. This man is tough and rugged. It doesn't look like anybody would be able to hurt this man. Out of three, it is all over. Diamato outside the ring. And uh, I don't know about this man Pringle. I really don't. Well, it seems like Percy Pringle has a lot to say, but apparently his men can back up what he says. Well, that uh, was certainly proven to be a fact just now as uh, the missing link demolished uh, two individuals in uh, short order in a special handicap. To watch the well, I just hope they're able to uh, keep this man under control because uh, he appears to be indeed uh, a dangerous adversary and uh, strange, I think, is the best word I can put for it. When he just walked by the desk, I noticed that he had lacerated his own forehead, beating himself in the head with a chair, and it didn't phase him. seemed like he liked this. The, uh, how do you stop a man like this? I don't know. He apparently is impervious to pain, and here you see him as he's uh, was beating his head, and then suddenly used his head as a battering ram, catching uh, uh, Warner, dropping him to the canvas, and uh, you see once again as he continues to beat himself on the head with that chair, but uh, it has little or no effect upon him whatsoever. In fact, the chair is getting the worst of that one, as you can see, it uh, split in half, and uh, so the missing link in a special handicap match, and of course, uh, you heard uh, the boss man say that the missing link will be wrestling two opponents no matter where he goes. And that's a most interesting observation. Overconfident, I think. Well, you know, normally in a handicap match, one man's going to be on the apron. He took both of these men on head on, and uh, he didn't even break a sweat. This man is very dangerous. He is indeed. And so the boss man has made his presence held in a hurry with a pretty young thing and uh, Rick Rude and the missing link. Don't forget the return of Wild Bill Irwin in the near future. And until next week, speaking on behalf half of a buddy Colt. This would be Gordon Soley saying so long from the Sunshine State.